Three, two, one. On pause. Six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten. And as you can hear, we've got Deutschland, we've got Imperial Dane, we've got AE, and we've got bloodthirsty fans ready to watch Jibber and Theodosios tear each other's throats out. And I'll give you a warning before this first game of this best of three series starts. We're in for a long one. So go and get beverages, go and get supplies, because these two players are going to throw everything they have at each other. Dane, what are we expecting to see here on Twin Beaches today? Well, we are already looking at a triple pathfinder opening here from Jibber into weapon support tensors. This is looking to be a fairly novel strategy. Might involve 30 Celts, might involve enter tank half tanks for one of those snipers. Like, yes, I've seen Jibber doing some mad stuff with this recently. He's Welcome. using a lot of M3 half tracks. I watched one cast where he went for both the M45 and the 75 mil conversion. So Jibber's been doing some very interesting stuff. Meanwhile, the the Theodosios is the old reliable, like isn't he, Dane? Yeah, but he's going for the more, shall say, uh, standard Orange Pest du Maze, Triple Piney opening Hunter and Beaches. Yes. Which, of course, versus typical US metagame works well, but versus triple Pathfinders, this may not quite work out the way Theodosius had hoped for. Hmm, possibly not. He is that kind of player, though. He goes for the slow and steady start. Yesterday, I watched him versus the nefarious and infamous Dexen in the quarterfinals, and he, um, he actually played quite aggressively in game two of that best of three, so uh, some, some kind of new profile from Theo, starting to be a little bit more aggressive now and again. I'm liking yeah, what I've also, been seeing. Yeah, he also did similar to this as Dumais in his first match, went hard MP4 to grow, and he's forcing Dumais to have to go for fast pass, run the first gray, fast Greyhound. Fair enough. And uh, here we go, we've just got some jumping in and out of garrisons, some posturing for position in this early game. How are you liking Twin yeah. Beaches, Dane? Is this map worn to you yet? Yeah, I definitely won up to it. In fact, it was the Master League match. I think it was Kawasaki. I can't remember his opponent, but it was in one of those Kawasaki matches there. And I just sort of like, it clicked for me. And I was like, oh, now I understand this map. Like, you know. Do you know what's sad? Even maps like Quir Quentin Tarantino have started to click for me. I just like Co3. The maps don't yeah. matter as much because it's such an aggressive game relative to Co2. Um, yeah, I mean, even yeah, even like Quentin Tarantino beaches like or Hill Foothills, they're like, you know, has that element like in a way just it makes it much harder just to camp out and install that. You know, force opens up for more flanking paths, and I think that's what makes a lot of the co three maps more exciting. Yeah, exactly. There's a mo larger margin for error because the play is that more chaotic. Right, let's see what we've got going on in terms of Jibber now. He does have his MG out. It's run into a pioneer. We've got MGs out for Theo as well, and another one to follow up. It seems he's gone for mechanized in this game. Okay. Yeah. Give me one with Parfa uh, Airborne, of course. Got Parney's been caught up at 30 cal. Question is, how many 30 cals would he go for, I think? I've seen him go for three on Road to Tunis, the last game I covered of his versus Demare. I think you may have covered that one as well. It was a, an interesting strategy, but it's very Road to Tunis uh, orientated because you can pull off a base pin on that one. Here we go. We've got Infantry Support Centre, as ever, coming out for the Jibmeister. Yeah, I mean, infantry support center is just like, you know, the de facto battle group choice. Uh, support center choice is what I'm talking about. Because it's just like, it's so good, it's so efficient. Yeah, well, it's a free squad at the end of the day. And the munition surplus. I mean, who wouldn't go for that? Only people yeah, exactly. that are craving a bit of variety to their day would go for anything but ISG. Pretty much, pretty much. He's just too good at the moment. Parfum's falling back here on health in the south here. Obviously, staying clear of Theodosius machine and Gewehren. Yeah, plural. I like it. You can actually speak German, so that's probably why you know the plurals of these things. And it's just been a steady game so far. You can clearly see that both players are starting to, to posture up. This tournament is going to be for $600, I believe. And the winner of yeah. this series likely goes to face on Orange Pest 2. Let's face it, the best Co3 player on his day at the moment. Pretty much. Pretty much. I think there's like really an argument there. Most yeah, innovative, would you say, as well, Dane? He does some innovative tactics and strategies, doesn't he? Yeah, but it's also because he does a lot of research on them. Like, he actually tries out strategies a lot. They listens for feedback, you know, with Dumais and, you know, Sulu, for example. He did a lot of testing there, for example, before the Master League, you know, trying to strategy for that. So it's not just like, you know, yeah, it's not like he just 
He actually yeah, explores. He doesn't just like assume. You're absolutely bang on. I was pointing that out during the Master League Finals. Uh, he actually respects and likes Co3, which is a massive advantage if you're playing it. <laughs> Who would have thought? Absolutely. <laughs> he actually did. He, he actually does. He often disrespects his uh, his com contemporaries and his rivals. But it actually feels like he's onto something because he says that other players aren't exploring enough. They're not strategically thinking about Co3 as much as they should be. And he reckons that we haven't even scratched the surface of what this game could be capable of with uh, in time. Oh, I absolutely agree with that. I definitely think, I mean, just, you know, looking at the last month, you know, I figured that'd be a dry month because, you know, not exactly the most satisfying balance update we got there, like at the end of August, but like, you know... During the September, like, you know, it's just been, like, a lot of interesting matches, a lot of developments that are just slowly happening with the meta game. All right, so, let's... Like, you know, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, we've got to talk about tactics and deployments at the moment because the 221 is out of the Luftwaffe company. We've got the M8, of course, soon to follow from Jibba. And very recently from Jibba, he has actually gotten two cutoffs of Theodosios's, and uh, that's going to hurt on his resource income for certain. Absolutely. I mean, the Chuchu one's going to help him get back map control. And of course, there's the Grey on. He can just quickly add the Panzer Duke, so to that we deal with it. Also, we got light machine guns and the paratroopers. Enemy activity near our wow. Point. Now, Vet Zero, that's not that crazy, but they will cl uh, climb the Vet Train, Dane. And when they get to Vet 3, they are Terminators. Absolutely. And, oh, we got the Flak 30. It's Flakadaka time here from Theodosius. Oh, my. <laughs> Absolutely it is, and we've got the M8, which has improved in time, its audio profile's gotten a lot better, and it's kind of getting ubiquitous with USF play at the moment, Dane. I rarely don't see the M8 in a game. It's really become popular lately, it's like, you know, it used to be fast first, maybe Grand Nuts like Greyhound first, then fast afterwards, it's become such a dominant element. The Flakadak is on the attack, can it save the 2-2-1, he's backing away as quickly as he can. The M8's against it. There's a mine he could go into, but no, he's reversing away. And can he survive? Uh, he almost has it. As for Prabhuti, by the way, he's asking about why the show Greyhound and production is a bit of a weird thing with the uh, replay overlay we've got going here. It's case he shows, I think, what wrong units there. We are still, of course, waiting for the official replay overlay, which will be soon, TM. Yeah. It's on the uh, Raw this for December. Yeah, rather skeletal, um, what's that tree diagram thing they give us? A roadmap, that's it. A skeletal roadmap. But I'm reliably getting the kind of the impression there's a lot more to come that isn't on the roadmap. Yeah, I mean, we could just for some look at, you know, just recently they showed off like an improvement to the tactical map, which wasn't on the roadmap either. So I think they're sort of playing a safe strategy. Like, you know, they definitely got the things they absolutely know they can do. And then they got a lot of other stuff there under that, which, like, you know, they're not 100% sure of. So they just rather keep it as a surprise in case they get it ready in time. Debacle and chat hits the nail on the head. They're trying to overpromise and uh, underpromise and overdeliver, which is exactly what you want to do. And it's the exact opposite of what they were doing at the start of the uh, game's life cycle. So it's a welcome change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's the smart way. Yeah, they're underpromising and overdelivering, and they, yeah, as you said, they did the opposite at the start. Yeah, they went four that's factions, right two campaigns. It's going to be completely finished at launch. Uh, spoilers, it absolutely wasn't. Yeah, it was a bit rough shot. Getting better though. Let's focus. Oh, the mine's just gone off. Fortunately, it was a pathfinder yeah. with no health damage. Well, no um, lethality there, We're just surviving. Yeah. And we got the pair we've got the power as well in the south here. We got a bit of standoff between the two machine guns, but looks like the Grand's being sent in to break this stalemate by the lighthouse. Yeah, and one's got height advantage, so he's going to win there. It's a nice game we've got evolving here. The Flak 30, do you like this weapon, Dane? Do you deploy it yourself in your own games? I do, I do. I absolutely love it. It really packs a punch versus, like, infantry support weapons. Like, it doesn't matter if it's, like, Gurkhas, Rifemen, whatever. Like, it dies in front of the Flak 30. It's interesting developments then. So we've got the Akhtarad out and we've now got the M3 half track out from Jibba. So as predicted, he is going to be testing this out on the battlefield. So some mechanized infantry taxes from the Americans in a rare development. Possibly at least. Yeah. Perhaps he upgraded what he does here. Yeah, I'm keeping I'm an eye on it. Using half -tracks. We must act. Maybe he'll use it as a half track. That would be a novel concept, eh? Imagine that. Reinforcing, yeah, moving he's actually infantry. Going for the anti tank on conversion there. Oh, yep. And he's going for the munition surplus as well. Interesting. 
Indeed, yeah. Going from the right hand to this thing can be like pretty decent. As a fun fact, these were some of the US Army's first actual tank destroyers of the war. Really? The ones. Oh, we've got an engine damaged on the M8. The Ekatrad could finish it off. We've got nothing else to help out the little armored car. And the much oh, yeah, bigger yeah. one should get the kill. Down it goes, the ground pops there. Like a pimple. But now we got the anti-tank half track on the move here for Jeva. Yeah, look at that thing. It's got a big 75 mil. It's not afraid to use it. Is fearless. Will Jibba go for another one? No, it's just going to stick to one here. There you go, bombarding him the machine gun. Whoa, what a lot of health damage on the first shot there. That definitely did the trick. Right, second eight rad out. Yes, indeed. Theodosios is getting ever more mechanized. He is indeed. He's got a lot of auto cannons. then that way. He's got the flak phone. He's got the two Arctrads there. That's a lot of bang. It is. It's uh, a little bit less bugged now. They fixed the auto cannon bug, which was causing those things to overperform hideously. They, they're a little bit more metromonic now rather than just uh, death inducing. Indeed, indeed. Oh, flanking their half track here. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I didn't do too much. They're at a bit of a standoff now. They've both escalated their army sizes and they're both tempting one another to push further. Jibba has suffered, well, slightly more victory point damage, but they've pretty much been pushing each other across the map. And in terms of res resource income, uh, they've both been doing pretty well. Absolutely. We got another perishable here from Light Machine Gun Zone getting caught by the both armored cars and the Flak 30. <laughs> Truly screaming eagles uh, up north here, Captain's the Grand Ears in the northwest corner. Point, yep, let's control. focus on that for a second, but let's go back to the south because the paratroopers barely survived the eight rad onslaught there. There was another thinking of coming in. Theodosios is getting ever more confident in the south. He also has a Jaeger with a Panzerschreck ready to protect them should the 75 mil rear its ugly head. Indeed. Given uh, I'll bring up the Chaffee tank here to sort of help deal with the Arcards. Yeah, I love the Chaffee. Really makes for a mobile and exciting gameplay. Have you caught any of Charlotte's recently replays, uh, Dane, with the Chaffee spam? Yeah, I have actually casted one there, though. There were some slight technical issues with the start of it, but I did catch one of them. She really likes those Chaffees. She does tend to go some very interesting strategies as well. Yeah, now they can maneuver as a six pack across the map with the new pathing changes. It is actually yeah. viable, even on Pacino stalemates. Indeed. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing how Pacino fully looks once they overhaul it. Never mind looking for further battle improvements. Yeah, they've got to make North easier to play. It's a bit of a bottleneck at the moment. Uh, Charlotte yeah. actually uses the bombardment ability of the air support center to bombard the first house to make the North wider. I spoke to her yeah. about that. It's interesting. That is actually very interesting indeed. Chaffee up here and Tsing half track ready as well for Jibba. That's going to give uh, Theodosius a bit of a hard time if he's not careful. Ooh, Ooh, nice flank in the south from Theodosius. Let's get that on camera. Yep, it's been caught out by the MG. Should be fine. Meanwhile, 8 Rad's marauding. He's looking for his next kill. He's with the 75 mil and they're just going to spot. They do have a scout on the lookout. Here comes the Sh No, the Shrek's been forced off there. No mercy here from uh, Jebba, as always. Like a typical Dutchman. Indeed. <laughs> right, back in base for um, Theodosios. He's got a lot of infantry that's recently healing up. Getting back onto the field. Meanwhile, the same for Jibber. So both have a full army size. Now we've got 61 pop cap for Jibber, 64 for Theo. So the army sizes are building nicely. Indeed, it's a sort of slow build-up before things really, I think, get heated up. But it's not been a boring build-up, I would say. There's been a lot of manoeuvrability, a lot of cut-off attempts, but it's not been fully going for the jugular, let's smash each other in the face, quite yet. Not yet. They haven't really sensed, like, that opportunity they could, like, really just go in hard. I think that's going to happen, like, eventually, though, once they sort of really feel like they're confident can, like, make a good push. Tank depot for Jibber next. And then we've got 130 fuel in the bag for Theo, so I'm sure Panzer Company won't be too far behind. We're losing a territory point. Enemy Indeed. We'll have a see what Jibber goes for Sherman. He will go for the Hellcat here versus Theodosius. Right, Flare illuminates the battlefield for Jibber. 
Just trying to get an idea for where Theo's army is, but where isn't it right now? There is a massive impasse in the north and centre. Something's got to give. Indeed. South side is sort of kind of open, but the problem is I don't think Theo really has a lot of forces to quickly exploit that fast enough here versus Theodosius. Good spotting from the Pioneer for the Jaeger, which got some big shots in on the 75 mil. 8 Rad is getting ever more confident. Shafi tries to beat it back. And we got the Flacco Dacker just came versus the Pathfinders there, ripping them apart. Oh, Pioneers' yeah, first fatality of the game. Pioneers are down. Followed rapidly by Pathfinder scores. Oh, wow, yeah. Let's see that. Can't no. use heavy cover too much against the flat third heal, just lead you out behind it if you're not careful. Yeah, that AoE is very lethal. Meanwhile, Captain gets a bit of artillery down, and uh, Jib is just trying to find his way back into the center because Theo has kind of taken and held some pretty important points here. He's holding like all the vital points that cross the hill there, but at the same time, the other thing is realizing this is trying to just sneak around him by going through the south beach and try and draw a few doses out from the hill. But the problem with South Beach, it doesn't have 2 plus 16 munitions. Oh, here we go. Big push in from the Shafi. The 8-Rad somehow survives. So little health remaining. 75 mil was so slow to help out. And we got the champ being banned by the Flak 30. Good catch, Dane. All right, Willie. Pete Smoke utilized. To allow everything safe passage back to base there. And he's pushing up with the 30 cal now. A bit of MG on MG action. Need him, he got a hell can away for Jibber. Look at that damage the 75 mil does. It really does push the MGs back to base in one hit. It does. In the south here, Jibber's now approaching the southern victory point here. He's never going to try and see if he can't draw Theodosius out from the hill here by threatening the fuel and the victory points. So mechanized-wise, Theo's gone for Raid, Package, 8-Rad, Fuel Siphon, which I think makes his tanks cheaper, I guess. Or Mechanized Assault as well as an option. Meanwhile, so Jib... he's not going to be rushing up Panthers. Mm. Yeah, because he's dispersed his points across both branches. I see what you mean. Meanwhile, um, we've got every choice from Jibbo. We've got Pathfinders, Paradrops, and AT Guns. And then uh, we've got the airdrops for the uh, supply drop, rather, and he's still yet to choose if he'll go for Bombardment or P-47. Oh, we've got a squad wipe on a mine there. Chunks Ooh. of men created. Point is under yeah, at least it was a Pathfinder squad, not a paratrooper squad, but still that hurts here for Jibba. Gives him a little more blind versus his opponent. Certainly does. They've taken our victory point. All right, flat right, just keeps it up there. Yep, it does. Here we go. We've got a Hellcat M18 finding an Actrad in the south, but there's a Shrek there to help out. Has the M18 dug too deep? Ooh, and he gets fans of the too. I feel like this was Jibber going too far here versus Theodosius. One he's hit, he's off. Yeah, he's off. Cruise Shock, it's a fast tank, the fastest tank of the war. It's getting out of there, Dane. That was definitely incredibly close there for Jib, but he definitely was relying on the speed there to see him through no matter what. But did he use Pathfinder Smoke in the midst of that? Because that means it's not luck, it's just skill. He did not use the Pathfinder Smoke. In fact, that was the Ah, oh, well, of course it was. Oh, okay, it was just luck, Dane. I can confirm. <laughs> we must pull this back. South being pushed up on the hill here, right into the MD-42. Northwest. Of yeah, self. I see it. Well, that wasn't a very good attack. That was like something I do in auto match day, and I forget there's an MG there, just walk something into it. Come on, yeah, Jibber. you got to wake up. And we got the first pans out here for Theodosius. The pans are four. Dane, do you play favourites, if you had to say one? Or do you have a favourite player amongst these two? Hmm, I kind of like Jeffo's novel tactics, but the Doge is just a solid player. But it's a bit tough here, I'm not really sure if I got like, any favour between the two. I, I see the Theodosios is very Germanic, he is German, but he's very solid and consistent and efficient, and he's, he's like a crowd favourite for that reason. We all got a soft spot for him, but 
I think Jaber is certainly... Jaber is more of a proud pleaser in his strategic output and some of the... He's also one of those players who really getting like, you know, orange pest. Like, he explores, he, you know, tries out stuff. He doesn't just rise in, like, you know, the meta in that sense. Absolutely. Panzer 428 Rads Chaffee did a little bit of reconnaissance there. Hellcat's getting healed up. He's lucky to still have that on the field. Very lucky there, Black Freddy being hauled back for some healing enforcement. Right, the, yep, the, the 30 cal was just wiped there by a big shot from the Panzer IV. The Airborne have had to crew it, so that's going to be an expensive re-crew when you have to reinforce the Airborne. Indeed, but I think it beats not having a 30 cal at all here for Jebba. Oh, definitely. Right, the Hellcat's back on the field, just doing a bit of uh, reconnaissance. There's a lot of units to micro now for Jibber. His, his army is very diverse. It is, and certainly obviously just fairly large, but Theodosius is also like pretty big. So they both got like a fair amount of stuff to handle, and Theodosius is just adding another hand of fortune proceedings. Which would really help either of the players a mortar, because you don't really have... You could you have to move them and do stuff with them. You'd have to micro them as much. That's why I really like it when players go for mortars, because it just helps them use the rest of their army. But it's also kind of well, like using tank riding. It quickly turns briefly, like, you know, two units into one. In terms of, like, you moving about stuff. The Jaegers are such flank protectors. They do a great job of that, giving Theodosios a really strong, stable foundation. He can set up position on the map and he can be pretty safe. He's not going to get a monstrous flank from the US Army applied to him. Eight Rad in trouble here. Shafi hits him. So does the 75 mil. So little health remaining. Close call there, but Theodosius does pull it back just in time here. And the Jaegers prevent a pursuit here from Gibber to finish it off. Let's not sleep on the amount of map pressure Theo has now applied. His victory point counts 4-1-3. Jibber's down to 2-4-6. Yeah, that's quite a difference between the two here. We got a second Hellcat though for Jibber. I suspect Jibber's just waiting for the right time to just charge him in against the Avengers. Yeah, he's got the Panzer IVs as well. They can really take the Shafi and the 75 mil and pretty much just reverse, get repaired, rinse, repeat. They can hold ground, basically. Do a lot better against infantry, of course. Oh, Jibbers thinks he can go in with the two Hellcats here, Dane. Do you reckon he's going to go for it? Yeah, he's got the Evercons there for those actors, so he knows where the Jaegers are, and he knows they can move him with the Hellcats and utilize the speed and damage here. First, but there you go. You forgot about the fact that he's got, got the Chaffee moving in here. It's a hard push, but Jibber against the Doches. He is going in hard. But he's exposed his rear now. Another Panzer Fall goes round the side. He's got to cancel the push before the Jaegers get there. Can he get out before the Panzer Shreks wreck his army? The half track took out the Panzer IV. What? What a shot from the half track. The flanking Panzer IV was the one to fall. Who could have expected that? <laughs> Certainly not Theodosius. And the flag 30 there sends the rest of the infants going away. And the Hellcat gets away with next to no health left. That's such a common pattern in coming heroes, isn't it, Dane? The object of the assault, the original Panzer IV survives. And the one that came to help out on the flank dies. Indeed. As the same plans rarely survive initial contact. With the enemy, indeed. Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the kneecap. On That's the a new That's the great philosopher. It's a new Mike one. Mike Tyson once said. Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Something like that. Pretty, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that half is actually done fairly decent here for Jibber. I was down, yeah, I was slagging the M3 off, saying the Panzer Falls can pretty much take what it's got to offer, they'll be fine. And now I have humble pie all over my egg. Indeed you do. Here it comes again, the, the Panzer Slayer. Ooh, that time I bounced off the Panzer Falls front llama. Oh, and he exposed it to the flat 30. And the Jaegers. Oh, no, the hero. Is now zero. That was a very brief uh, story there. Yeah, we were just praising it, and then it just gets completely deleted. Oh, no. What a shame. I won't say Caster's Curse because that's too, um, too cliched these days.
we don't say cliches. We, we try and invent new, new cliches. Indeed, indeed. We're trying to break new ground here. Got some cool people in chat out there. We got some uh, old faces, some new faces. If you're new to Company Heroes, say hello. We'll call you a noob and show you the ropes. And if, you're, if you've been watching for a long time, do the same. It's always nice to have a sense of community whilst we're watching these sweaty nerds bash each other's faces in. Indeed, and there you go. Do you bring in the Sherman tanks? Going for something a bit more heavy than a Hellcat. Oh, nice F ambush on the flat 30 by the paratroopers. Yep, they're still on hold fire, though. <laughs> the enemy is they ambushed them by shouting at them. Right, Hellcats are awaiting their um, sloped armored friend to come and help out. Indeed, it's very large slope on the front friend there because the Sherman was very large for a tank. Really? Yeah, like it was like, you know, had a massive profile. Like if you like... It was tall, the yeah. The Pershing is like, you know, much taller than the Pershing. Wow, it's, it's crazy that, that that is the case. I mean, I have seen them in real life. I, but I saw... Ah, the one at Bovington is a Sherman Firefly. But I suppose... That I should have realised the American Sherman's pretty much the same size, yeah. Just a different cannon. It was apparently also a bit of an issue for the cruiser times because it gave it like a much higher centre of gravity, so like in some cases they had to be careful how they were driving. That makes perfect sense because that was a massive complaint of the Stuart and the Lee and the Grant, is the high profile in the desert. But the Sherman was pretty much the same height. Okay, fair enough, Dan. I finally get it. Yes, the Sherman is very big. And we also got here the carpet bombing run lineup for Jebra. That could be a big wild card here. If, oh, he's going for it, he's going for it! Here comes the push, the armoured cavalry is in a cavalcade. And it's looking to turn him into mincemeat. The Shreks are there though, Dane, they should defend him. Oh, here comes the bombardment! Yeah, nothing dies! Nothing! It could have been a bit better coordinated thing there by Jeva, but it's only pushed Theodosius back nonetheless. It sent a message. Oh, yes. he's made Theodosius' side of the map look like the moon. Pretty much all they done. Yes. Yes, we don't talk about the done here. Well, this is, reminds me of my second name too much and many dead Frenchmen. Fair enough. Pretty much the battle that kind of won the First World War, wasn't it, Verdun? When they kind of... Wehrmacht kind of... Grow, ground itself to a, a pulp kind of thing. I think it was the French that ground themselves down there as well. Yeah, basically everybody. Horrible, horrible battle. Indeed. Yeah, Every battle in the First World War is horrible, though. We, that's why we don't make games about it, because it's... There's no manoeuvrability, no excitement. It's just horror. Abject horror. Indeed. Yeah, Theodosius more or less been pushed back to the base of the gym. I mean, even the common bombing didn't do anything directly, indirectly. It really just forced the lines back and allowed Jeff to control the center now. So now it's Theodosius has to push into Jeffa rather than vice versa. It's just shock and awe. I think the MVP units of the game so far are probably these Jaegers. It's not necessarily that they're getting kills, but the amount of pressure they're applying, they're keeping this huge army of Jibbers at bay and constantly making him second guess his aggression. But Theo now needs to use them as a base to launch off. He needs to get his Panzer army up. And he now has the Panther tank to act as his spearhead. So maybe it's Theo's time to push. Yeah, now he's definitely got the armored fist ready here to punch in Jibber's nose. If he's trying to. Ooh, Jibber's going for 105 on the Sherman as well. What? We're just basically... Choice. It feels like a, the WWE wrestling main events of... Company of Heroes games because they're basically like building everything possible in their army. Indeed, I mean, that's, I feel like it's been a lot of these Company of matches this tournament so far. There's just been so many units built in a variety of manners. I've even seen like double flak 30s. Have, have you seen that? That would be a lot. Yeah, like I think it was Dumais went for one match and Lady Ritz in another match, double flak 30s. Just dropping That's healing, else. munitions on the field, just keeping his armoured formation with infantry around them at all times. 
Guess he's saving up for another cardboard bombing run here. Yeah, he has going to go so he has the munitions oh. already, actually. He's just hit it. I'm at uh, 29, 54, 55. Just checking there, yeah. Oh, my God. The 8 rad should not have got ventured forward there. It got it literally... Got deleted. Deleted, yeah. Oh, and Theo's angry about that. His Panzer IV's gone forward as well. I'm not sure about this, Theo. Yeah, I think... It, oh, we got a car bomb. Oh, we got a machine gun. And the flag 30 seconds only moving into it. Oh, no. Takes a while to come down, though. He should be okay. No. Oh, he's cleared some more. Oh, the flat 30 was annihilated there. Mines went down as well. And here comes Jibber Army. All of his armors pushing in, Dane. He's going in hard. Rider the Valkyries is playing. One Hellcat's low. Meanwhile, he's got the Shafi going round the outside. The eight rads just sitting there. Please focus on me instead, please. Panther's Man, low. Panther's solid, down. Here comes an, another, though. Panzer IV's come out. Oh, it's all boiling over, Dane. It's a massive armored tank battle. That's what we want to see. Everything's going kaboom, to quote Imperial Dane from 2017. As the Shafi's still alive, goddammit, taking pot shots at the back of the Panther. Meanwhile, everything's retreating past him with a bulldozer Sherman's coming to view. He wants some of the action. Every shot is penetrating from the Shafi. It certainly is the... Brave little Shaffy that could is no longer available and Jibber retreats over what was an absolute hellacious battle and Dane were now left asking ourselves one question. Who came out on top? That's actually a bit tough to say there. I think it might have been Jibber because he maintained map control, but also like the Doge's lost like a fair bit of armor and vehicles in the process. He lost yeah, that that was awesome. I told you this was a, a professional wrestling game. It's, it's fake. It's just choreographed, Dane. There's no way that second Panther was, was going to hit exactly during the tank battle like that. <laughs> right. Well, it's just the way that just the cover bomb was like, it was like a starting signal, you know. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, absolutely awesome. I hope we did good guesting for it. I hope we gave it its uh, due. Eight Rad is tangoing with the bulldozer here. That's an interesting engagement. Nemo Yeggs are storming the hill. Well spotted by Lenzoa in chat. The 30 cal was stolen for a second there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's got away with it. Yeah, he got the flag 30. <laughs> Panther's going in for the Sherman. Sherman somehow survived there. Hellcat came to save the day. And the Panther smokes himself away. We've got an American 30 cal, Dane. That's a novel item. Yeah. And then again, like, if you see a flag 30 and grab it, you generally do because it's a really good gun to have. <laughs> we're both very happy, aren't we, Dave? This is why we're Company Heroes fans. This game right here. Yeah, this is just absolute spectacle of the good kind. I mean, I would love it every time I see a carbon bombing run, honestly. <laughs> it's just so gleeful about wanton death and destruction. Indeed. I mean, we are Western Europeans after all. It's in our Sector blood. Gone. We must yes, take it back. It's in tiny fragments of our enemy's blood splattered across the battlefield. Indeed. Okay, Sector so Panther's being contact. repaired. The eight rads had it. Uh, it's back to full health. But Jibber is at 80 pop cap. Meanwhile, Theo is at lowly 63, indicating Jibber has possibly got the better of this situation. And I would like to say it's most likely due to the 30 cal being stolen. Yeah, getting your opponent's equipment never hurts. Third Ooh, Panther on the field, pan yeah. Well, the second concurrent Panther, certainly. Yep. Oh, way, he has two Panthers now. That's more than one. <laughs> yes. Maths, everyone. <laughs> certainly does. And... I will say this though, Dane. Has he got too much of an anti-tank profile now? Will he be able to exert enough anti-infantry anti -infantry map capping pressure? The Panthers aren't completely useless as infantry. I mean, in the previous match versus Dumais, at one point, like, just rushed down Dumais with the Panthers and just started claiming I sent a tank gun, so, you know, they can do something. Hmm. But yeah, he probably could benefit from some star storm or oh, something. Yeah. Extra anti infantry. That's, def I, that's definitely a good call. Is, and he has got a decent victory point count as well, so he could afford to be on one victory point for a while. 
You could even like go for the assault rifle package for all of them. Yes, he could. It has been buffed and tweaked recently, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, you always it found a place is. for SOS Troop in, in the past, Dane, but a lot of people are starting to find that they are very good now, aren't they? They are very good. They are very good. Right, in the north, the paratroopers are losing this battle. They can't withstand this punishment for too much longer. In the center, captain's being forced off, and in the east, the pathfinders are smoking themselves out. Uh, the smoke is lifting, and they're standing point blank versus an MG42. Oh dear. There's a big early moment. Oh. Yeah, we're holding in more Hellcats. Oh, is that what he's going for? Right, okay. So that'll mean that Theodosios is panther teching and Jaegers will be uh, absolutely fine. He's not going to be up against a veteran infantry build from Jibber by any stretch of the imagination. It's just going to stay tank onslaught versus tank onslaught. And that's what we want to see. Indeed. Panther wing 40, Hellcat caught in a bit of bad spot. Second one is ready. Theodosius though does not pursue. You're right, Dane. The panther took out an MG. You do appear to have a bit of AOE now to the guns. It must have crept Basically. in at some point. I didn't notice that creeping in until this tournament. Yeah, so the others have been noting a bit as well there. 30 cal ready. Right, 30 cal and 105 mil bulldozer pushing south. Meanwhile, the Panthers and 8 Rider are in the centre. This game is 36 minutes long and it's got no signs of stopping anytime soon. Indeed, and Theodosius... <laughs> Gets his flag thirty back. He was it was just on lease. Grasshopper reporting in. Indeed, those Americans are fond of borrowing stuff, anyways. All right, the Panther battle group in operation against yet another MG. There, they may be able to complete the cap. However, they're jumping in and out. One of the poor buggers has got a. Lug a heavy machine gun whilst he's doing this dance, and there you go, the cap's completed and they retreat home. Yup. Nothing left to dig in, but we got Paratroop, we got the Sherman there, those pioneers are not going to be able to do that. Ooh, Panthers fancy themselves against the Bulldozer. What was the Bulldozer thinking? He's only got a Sherman in support. Surely Jibber should have expected this. I think he was trying to, like, rush uh, the rest Ooh. of his act They are north. The Jaegers took out a Hellcat in the centre as well. The 105 Bulldozer's just gone down. The Sherman's next. Yeah, oh, massive losses here for Jibber. Massive losses. Huge. Meanwhile, we do have a Vet 1 Hellcat, but he's up against two Panthers here. The 8 Rad's going to churn up. Oh, circle charge on the Panther. Oh, there it goes, but it couldn't quite hit them or damage the engines. They just about rolled over it in time. It was ingenious from Jibber. Absolutely. At least he avoided blowing up his own men. Oh, wow. So now Theo's the one with the 80 pop cap army, and Jibber's down to 47. That was a massive swing. Now, part again was just like, you know, he was trying to, like, bull rush that hell... Uh, Akkad are hiding up there, but he forgot about the ambush Jaegers. They weren't appearing on his uh, air reconnaissance. Oh, I love it. I love the fact that air recon doesn't unveil um, cloaked units anymore. Unlike in Code 2. It's very nice. Good change. Indeed, indeed. Even gives ambush a bit more leverage. Exactly, and it was that leverage was used to huge upheaval there. As Theo's now the one in the lead in this game. Absolutely. I mean, he's got like two veteran Panthers. One of them, in fact, is like about to hit veteran C3. Bloody hell. What does that do, Dane? Any ideas? Well, it just shoots faster and moves faster and shoot. Oh, wow. Like... Banky, banky more. Excellent. That's probably what the tooltip says, actually. Knowing Relic. Yeah, I mean, for a Panther, that's like pretty good. You know, more bang, more good. <laughs> This is as descriptive as the uh, tooltips get in, in Relic Land, of course. Also, he's actually got two repair bunkers out there. He's going for a third one. Is he? Yep. Repair bunkers are very powerful. I recognize that in Alpha, and if AE recognizes it, it must be powerful. Meanwhile, Captain's about to die. There it goes. Against the restolen 30 cal, or reclaimed 30 cal, rather. No, Pioneers can build repair bunkers by default. It's just, you know, standard thing that, like, in Co-1. Oh, can they? Yeah. 
doesn't find I thought like a special was... battle group. Oh no, that's right. When I used them in Alpha, they were part of one of those. Do you remember the um what were they called? Field Marshals, that was it. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. part I think was the defensive one. Oh, those were the days. I liked Field Marshals. It was neat, but at the same time, like 90% of the time he just went mechanized. Yeah, true. True. That's a bit easier. It was also an overcomplication. Relic with clearly being overly ambitious with uh, Co3, hence its underbaked nature. But this game certainly isn't underbaked. This is a three-tiered mega cake, and it's been lovely to watch and consume. Absolutely, absolutely. I can't wait to see how the game's gonna like look and play like you know at the end of the year by December. Oh yeah. Well, I can't wait to play it after October the fourth. These smaller icons for Tac Map. That's gonna help my yeah. playstyle immensely. Plus better pathing and other stuff. They also improve responsiveness. I think it's going to be huge. Yep, Panthers rolling in. Jaeger's trying to kill this MJ. We do have, not Michael Jackson, MG, Machine and Gewehr. There it goes. It's been deleted as well. We do have three Hellcats now, and I'm, he's got to make something happen with them, Dane. Yeah, he's got to, like, catch the Adoshis off guard. All as the Panthers can look at. That's it. He does have a carpet bombing here lined up as well. Yep, I think he's going to go for it. We're going to see another carpet bomb push. Oh my, here we go. Hold on to your knickers, lads. This is going to be a big one. Jibber knows he has to get back into this. He's down to 69 victory points. It's do or die for the Dutchman. Pretty much. And he's probably trying to see if he can't suss out any like Jaegers first because they've proven to be like really big hindrances for him. He needs to push on, he needs to get in, he needs to withstand losses and deal more damage to his opponent here he goes he's got one cat going Hellcat going all the way around the lighthouse two are going through the center of the beach the airborne lead the way ace panthers getting it once got here and there we go we got the color bombing run oh, here he they go oh no one Hellcat down panther pushes on Pioneers die in the background, but it doesn't matter because the Panthers are imperious. No, the Ace Panther goes down. The Hellcats managed to target it. One Hellcat remains. However, one Panther remains also. Oh, this is looking terrible for Jeva. This could be DD. This could very well be DD for Jeva. I do not see him bouncing back from this. And there we go. We do, in fact, get the GG. We do get the GG. GG, well played. And we have Theodosios, the German, 1-0 up in this best of three. What a good game that was. Well played. Absolutely. That was a hell of a match there. Wowza. Hell of a match. Wowza uh, indeed. <laughs> Orange Pest has probably won the, the other semi by now. Let's face it. And we've got these two. that They haven't finished game two yet, which means it's going to be another epically long game two. <laughs> so Absolutely. So whoever Absolutely. emerges from this is going to be like dragging themselves with one remaining arm, a locker on the ground. <laughs> yeah, like Orange Fest is going to be like well rested by the time like you know whoever appears there before him. Oh dear, funny. Indeed, indeed. All right, I'm going on a little break, Danny. I'll uh, I'll hit you up in five minutes. I'll keep the stream active, of course, and I'll be re right back with you. Cheers. Same here.
Guys, we've got some news for you. The second replay is even bigger than the first replay. It's just literally peak company heroes. Awesome. Slow it up. Let's slow it up. Yeah, doing so now. Okay. Five second mark. Pop. Okie dokie. Coming soon. Okay, so. Gameplay. Save. Go. I think you, you're you more well practiced than me, Dane. Indeed, I pretty much get all the commands sort of like you need know, snail down at this point. Yeah, but you know the modern path by heart and everything. All right. I think I'm ready to go as well. Just do my Brilliant. Sc scores is surprisingly we have oh, I can't why is my suspend key not working? That should do the job. Wunderbar! I think I'm ready. Let me get to five seconds next. Sending Three, two, one, six, seven, seven, eight. eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I'm with you. Here we go. We've got Theo one nil up and going as the Brits of all things. Why on earth would he do that, Dane? I know he's got something in mind. Royal I imagine, engineer. possibly like thinking about like pursuing some more spicy battle group for later matches. Could do it. Um, second Royal Engineers out. Meanwhile, Jibber in the north is, of course, going as Wehrmacht. He has, however, deployed a Kettenklad, looking to outcap the Brits in the early game. And he's going for them forward to the Kettenklad. Still haven't seen a resurgence as of late, though, in the metagame. Did you know, Dane, you don't necessarily need to do this against Brits as much in the super early, but if you reverse your Kettenklad around the map, the engine noise is vastly smaller. So the opponent can't find out where it's capping. Yeah, I've noticed Dumay's doing that, actually. I was like, why is he reversing it all over the place? Did you know why, or was that new information for you? Someone pointed it out there in the chat that he's doing oh. this because it's much more silent. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. I hope they actually keep that in. That's the kind of stuff that I don't consider a bug. I consider it a feature, you know. Indeed. Another reason the Ken kind of so popular is because he can lay down mines super fast, but also without any tell. There's no indicators laying down a mine there. Ooh. Ooh, true. Yeah, and like if you stumble across it, it's just being a cat and crud. Don't worry, I'm just a cat and crud doing kitty things. Indeed, that's like you know, a great way to catch up a light vehicle, for example. Yeah, they'll pursue it. So you should probably drive in a semicircle to get to it if you're pursuing it. Indeed. And there you go, first shots, fighters, both players are going for the hill. As ever, this hill has seen many a battle. And of it course. has. When this map first launched, everyone was like, Oh, it's got a fuel on it! Go for the hill! Go for the hill! Um, there's a beach with two fuels on it. I don't care! There's one there! <laughs> and it's on a hill. <laughs> exactly. Also oh, because the cutoff points for the fuel hill, of course, are a little less uh, horrifying. True. I think there's in part again why people are a bit concerned about the beach because those cutoff points, you know, are a bit exposed. But at the same time, I think that's kind of the charm of the map. They are exposed. That's kind of like one of the reasons why I initially ate it. But once I understood it, it's like, Oh yeah, this is actually what makes the map good. It's those cutoff points. You can't just easily like defend them. We're in it now. Yeah, it's, it's like it's Angerville esque in some ways, but it's not as punishing as Angerville ever was due to the garrisons literally not being on the exact cutoffs. Exactly. Exactly. Now I feel like a lot of the Kofi maps have a bit of the old Co One maps a bit over them. 
Or perhaps in some you need a bit more tuning like Pacino. Do you feel like it has a bit of that Simois over it? Yeah, it's a bit Simois-y. I, I get that. Especially some of the early game capping going to the le far left and stuff. Um, but I really do think we need... Uh, what was that map now? The one that was a giant bridge. It wasn't Wreck Train. Bo Lowlands, Dane. Yeah. We definitely need a map like Bo Lowlands. One that makes you want to die. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, that's kind of Taranto Coastline in a way. But, uh... <laughs> that's on you, Bo Lowlands. We should definitely have an, ana uh, like an analogy for each of the Co. 1 maps. Because we've got five in Co. 1, haven't we? We've got five in... Co three mm. now. We've got Bolo Lands is definitely Taranto coastline. Semwa is definitely Pacino stalemate. This is Angoville, yep. obviously. We've already done that. What's the closest to Longra then? Mm. That's a good one. It's probably I don't know. Road to Tunis. Maybe I don't know. I suppose you would like inverted Longra maybe. Heavy machine gun and crew yeah. are ready for orders. All right, we've got machine gun even theodosius. Why is making double check and double sappers? There's two of everything. It's yes, two, 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 two strat. it's the Noah's Ark of punishment from the Brit player Theo in this game. Talking of punishment, welcome Zulu, Zulu Cobra in chat who decided to punish his PC with a beverage of water yesterday, but instead of playing Company Heroes. Uh, an interesting strategy. I'm not sure it played off. Thankfully, of course, he did have an air dry on hand, so he could sort of sort that out. Orange Pest in chat indicating he's already finished his semi final. <laughs> it's either that or he's just, you know, BMing by also being in the chat while playing the game. He is, he is very good, but he's not that good. We're losing a strategic but um, <laughs> he's been finished for 30 minutes. <laughs> I find this extra funny because I had to fight hard to get this semi today, and that was the reason. No offense to uh, good old Hulk Smash, but the uh, the skill disparity was quite Supplies different, let's say, in the other semi. Lines cut. We got Jimmy there with Purple Grandies, Break for MP40s, and we got machine guns on the way there. He's going for a very heavy T1 here versus Theodosius. Yeah. Now we've got unlocking of the M3 Stuarts, which is kind of a ceremonial unlocking that happens in every single brick game, regardless of 1v1 to up to 4v4. But we turn the keys and we can now announce that the early to mid game has begun. We can now call in yeah, Stuarts are just attack. really solid. They're good. They're also really fun. I'll tell them at the next brick meeting. All right. We have, of course, Breakthrough. Got Grenadiers waiting with MP40s to push for the cutoff. Jib is thinking about it. Indeed. I thought we were trying to figure out where the Vickers are. Well, he's, found he's found out where they are. Fuel. Yeah, exactly. And he's gone straight through. He's breaking through, Dane. He's doing as it says on the tin. <laughs> And he's being pushed back here. Not bad. He's Enemy also ground. getting this MG There's on retreat. Shame he wasn't able to get an assault grenade off. Indeed. A strategic point is being overrun. That is very unhappy. There's some more. I think he wants more chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, he can more of those mines from Jibber. He's queued up two of them here. Uh, one with the Pioneer, one with the Kettenkrad. Looks like the, as you've mentioned, the Kettenkrad's laid it so much more quickly than the Pioneer there. Also, as a fun fact, I actually discovered this We're recently, but if you ordered the Grandiers to build to something and you know, there's a mine that's being built, they'll actually go to assist laying down the mines afterwards. What? If they finish before the mine. That's pretty, that's a nice feature. I'm not even sure it's intentional, but it's certainly nice. Yeah, I just like remember it randomly just now. Stuart had like once. Right then, so Stuart's out for Theo. Do you get aggressive with these Stuarts, Dane? Do you try and push your opponent around with them, or do you just? I try to get aggressive. Yeah, I try to hit them from the flanks and combine with the follow package. You can like use this up quick to get in a bad situation. And of course, just to self repair. Got the scoped Enfield upgrade for Theo's Tommies. 
Indeed. Does he have training on them? I can check that now. He does not, does not. have training. Because I've definitely noticed there's also been a trend with some players where like go for like, you know, lots of sections fast, get training fast, then go lots of recce packs. This is a very mean combo. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Doubling up on your accuracy and your lethality. And we got Jaegs on layer for Jebba. Yep. Not... In response, like to the sort of light tank here. Yeah, and basically uh, doing what his opponent did to him in that previous game, just building a solid central base for the Wehrmachts on twin beaches that you can pivot around the Jaegers and they'll always be there to protect your flanks. And... Pretty much, pretty much. Oh, mine detonated. Is there any follow up? Doesn't look likely. Seems the Stuart will be fine. Yeah, but the rest of the units supporting this Stuart may not be as fine as we've got an MP40 grenade in squad going in hard on the flank here. Stuart goes stationary to get a shot off for a moment there. Isn't able to do so. Theo's chosen Indian artillery battle group. He's gone straight for Gurkhas. Yep. Pretty much a classic battle group choice there. Indian artillery. Stuart straight up good. Are you excited for Christmas Day and hopefully getting new battle groups? That'll be nice, eh? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Replay mode, new 1v1 one one map, further improvements to responsiveness, usable tack you know, map. Hopefully some new, yeah, hopefully some more battle groups. That'd be perfect. Especially if they also get, like, you know, some other surprises in there. Perfect. We just need more than between 1,000 and 2,000 concurrent players. And then, but that will come because the game will be better. Surely that will happen. Section of the Grenadiers here. Get back in the west. Girk is on the field, looking to cause some Nepali damage all over the place. And going for the Bren guns, the classic, the old reliable. Nothing beats the old reliable. Meanwhile, the Stuarts running into a. A Faust, possibly. Yes, there it is. The Shrek's in hot pursuit. It's a difficult road back for the little light tank. Yeah, if he does, just might have pushed his luck too far, mate. One Shrek shot in. Is there another Faust, possibly? Oh, he can't get it off. And Theo escapes. No. Very close call there, though. Very close call. And we got the flag 30 out for Jebba. The Flaka Daka is here. Yep, Flakadaka on the attacker there. All seeing the th Theos Vickers off. We are losing territory. And we got the Gurkhas the Monk Forts here heading the North Road. Welcome to the NA community of Company of Heroes. Both of them, Von Ivan and Momo, are in chat there. Hi, guys. Delightful. Damn it! Where's our screening truth? Oh, Flak 30 trying to catch the Gurkhas, but they do dodge it. Yep, staying behind the castle walls for now. Trying to keep up the victory point struggle. Theo is down to 403. Meanwhile, Jibber's sitting on 426. He's getting med healing next for the Wehrmacht player Jibber. Meanwhile, Theo is now going for infantry training, Dane. You'll be happy to see. There we go. That's only going to make Theodosius' infantry hit much harder. Infantry training completed. That's going to be a nightmare there, I think, for Jibber's horses. All right, Stuart's healed up and ready to go, going straight through the central territory. Meanwhile, MG pushes off in the south. Ren sprints into the Gurkhas. And that's successfully pushed them back. If you're just joining us, we had an absolutely incredible game one. It was truly awesome. It was, well, there we go. We've got Gren stealing the machine gun there. That's truly awesome from Jibber's perspective. But yes, game one was amazing, wasn't it, Dane? Tank battle after tank battle. Absolutely. Just some amazing pushes, some nice carbon bombings. Now we got that flag 30. I mean, for... Dude, don't you deal with it? Like, he's either flank it or hit it with artillery, basically, at this point. Can he catch it in position with Dusa? Because Jibba's handling his flag failure so far very well there. He is. Dosis. He's using it really cautiously, but effectively. Meanwhile, the infantry of the Wehrmacht are pouring onto the field around the castle walls. The Vickers can't contend. It's not looking great here for the Dosa. The Stuart can't get close either due to the Pantrafrex. No, it's hard countering 
the um, Stuart here. And of course, with Breakthrough, you get the Tiger in the late game, and that's going to be even more of a counter for what Theo can build. What does the Brit player do, Dane, in the, in the overall strategy, the build order of this game, to ensure a win? Well, if I was up against this here, that is Yeggs with Pantrashex, I'd pretty much always go for Matildas because the Matildas just don't really care about Pantrashex. Do you feel... Also, Matildas currently a bit busted, but uh, I mean, against Yeggs, it's just absolutely good. Yeah, oh, there's a great assault on the building, but he's out as soon as he was in. But don't you feel versus Tiger Dane with Matildas, you're kind of on a tick, a, a, you know, a timer until that Tiger comes out, gets veterancy and kind of zones you out of the entire battlefield. Yeah, typically you get like a Matilda, you push them off the field and then you start, say, going for Grant's 17 pounder guns. Oh, right, that's the, the follow up. Have a lot of just raw firepower. Like, I've had cases where, like, you know, three Grants took out my Tiger. And in the case, of, like, you know, uh, the 17 pounder guns, you just, like, slam the Tiger tank. Oh, I see, I see. Panzer Company coming out, more shoe mines going down for Jibber. Indeed. Nice flank in the south from. Dosis against Jebba. A lot of suppression coming down on the recce Tommies. Theo and Jebba just struggling to gain possessions on the map here, struggling to push each other off. And they're just building their army sizes up with 63 Popcat versus 66. And what we saw in the first game is they weren't playing overly conservatively or defensively. They did go for some big assaults when the time was right. They're also just constantly, like, you know, looking for, like, openings. Like, you see, there's a chem cut all the way up the north end, for example, there from uh, Jibba. Oh, yeah, let's fast game the student, They're just playing the entire map. And that's one of the best things about Co3 is the light vehicle class is back. The true light reconnaissance vehicle. I'm not talking M3s, WC5-1s. The little tiny nippy buggers. Like mosquitoes, they are. Flying around your head, capping around the sides of the maps. And you even see some mine stain on really, like, peripheral... Tangents just to catch the uh, naughty little capping units off. Indeed. Or just the way the infantry is being used is a lot more active compared to, say, Co2, where they just tend to just sit back and wait for the other guy to pop the head out before popping it off. A lot of head popping. Like uh, a teenage bathroom. Okay. Indeed, or trench line in World War One. Yeah, I like that analogy more because it's more uh, cool. Right, Indeed. flares go off. He's illuminating the battlefield, looking for his next push. Meanwhile, Jibber's going for the Luftwaffe officer quarters. Trying to get some um, veterancy on his Jaegers. And we got the pants off of Jibber. And Theodosia's only now going for the comfy command post, so he's going to basically left for the steward and a six pounder going to deal with that uh, Panda 4 until he gets something bigger out. Right, Theo's going all the way around the side here, trying to get rid of these Grenadiers from the plus 16 munitions. He's overexposing himself slightly. Will Jibber sense something here? Yes, he is. He's rolling in with the Panzer IV. But at the same time, if he goes in like that, he's also going to expose his flank to the 6 pounder gun. Ah, yes, he is. There we go. Side hit. Beautiful. I still remember them not including sidearm in Code 2, because apparently it made it too difficult to defend. Yeah, it kind of ruined team games because team games were literally just like elephant versus SU-85s every game kind of thing. Pretty much. We're losing a munitions. Getting in by the Western Vic two point here. We also got a bit of a probe in the south here from Jibba. Yep, little probing action. Just like a proctologist at work. The beggars are threatening a victory point. I don't know what proctologist you go to that uses machine guns, but uh, <laughs> I'm not going to ask for You have to pay extra for that, Dane. I can give you their numbers. <laughs> All right. No thanks. <laughs> Here we go. Stuart. And going here. Jaegers and the MP40 Grenz with a cloaked Vet 3 Riketten. Watching on, spurring them into action. We got the flag fairly just pinning down the Gurkhas and the sections on the hill there. And a nice merge here from Jebba on the flag 30. Yep, keeping it in battle. There was no point Theo tangoing against it. Meanwhile, there we go. Dane's called for it. We are going to go waltzing in with a Matilda very soon. 
sector lost. Yeah, it's very popular at the moment, partly because it's actually lost. currently kind of better than a Panther in a lot of respects while costing less than a Panzer IV. Mm. What do you think Relic were thinking when they decided to make two allied factions and only one German faction in Company Heroes 3? It was a strange design concept, wasn't it? I'm sure they had some plans there for a fourth one. They just, you know... Ran out of time. And they had some issues with the early game. Yeah, something like that. There we go. Just as I say that, somebody in my chat says, How's my favourite faction, Dak, doing? I think that says it all. Meanwhile, we've got some orange smoke. Don't eat that if you... Careful. Yeah, almost had the machine gun there though, but fell a bit short there. Attack ground with the Aegis. Ah, misses wildly. Stuart's safe for now. A victory point and now we got Matilda out there, the queen of the desert, so in this case, the queen of the beach. Beach queen. Okay, sounds like some, some website. Slow, isn't it, the Matilda? I mean, look away, it's it not going to get into any battles anytime soon. Now that was also very much by design. It was known as an infantry tank. It was meant to just keep pace with the infantry. Exactly. The tank it was not a bad idea. A lot of these British concepts, they're not really relevant to modern warfare. Doesn't mean they were actually that bad in the Second World War. It was just like more, they think like, you know, well, Second World War is clearly going to be just World War One Again. 2.0. Yeah, again. Yeah. So it's like, you know, that's why they designed the tanks in line with. But the Child, the Churchill, the Matilda too, they were relatively effective. It, the infantry tanks weren't that bad. It was the bloody, the Crusader tanks, that, the cruiser tanks that weren't that successful. Indeed. They literally have paper armor. Yeah, the Matilda would also see plenty of servers in the Pacific, where it was fairly good versus the Japanese, in the jungles. Our tank crews will be better trained also, both, in the that, both tanks were you know, pretty well used by the Across Russians the with the lend lease as well. Yeah, they actually used the Valentine tank. They, that's the fun thing. It was the in Valentine tank was basically meant to be a replacement for Matilda because it was easy to make. But in Russian or Soviet service, they used it as a light tank. They loved it as a light tank. They loved it so much that when the British stopped using the Valentine tank in favor of the Churchill tank, they still produced Valentine tanks ah. for the Soviets. Mm. That is one of those really fantastic stories out of World War II, I find. Yeah, when, I, when we made a Co2 mod recently, we did make a Soviet Valentine based on that, actually. Because it made the most sense. We actually had to research what did they actually use, and it was, yeah, surprisingly the Valentine. Right, Jaegers and Flak 30 have pushed awfully far up. They could actually end up being counter-attacked here. They need to be careful, especially that Flak 30. Up oh, in the north, the... Matilda's up against multiple targets. Looks like the MG just, could go down. Got a chance of it. Nope. Got a bit lucky there, Mr. Jebba. Got a bit lucky. Avoided a turtle wipe there. Oh. And we got the foot guards on the way here. And we got a terrible flank straight into the MG from two units in the south. They expected to yeah. be flanking it, but they end, end up not doing so. Looks like the Vickers changed direction. Top level play here in meta plays. But the Jaegers were ambushed. The Vickers didn't see them, so they actually fire smoke. Oh, nice. Well, and we get a sprint. Points. It worked, Dane. It is top level play yeah. after all. Indeed, indeed. Now the Vickers are like, okay, we're safe, flats. Oh, bugger. Right <laughs> <to> the <laughs> Fog of war, they emerge and force them away. It's been a low lethality game so far. 41 kills to 38, 21 minutes into this game. But the Matilda wants to see to that. It's ambling forward, all the speed of a glacier. Ooh, flag Freddy Cup in trouble here with the Matilda now. But no, the Matilda is just missing almost every shot against it. Due to the nearby wall wounds there. Oh, Stuart's trying to push around the Jaegers. It smoked itself out. There's, mo there's artillery coming down thanks to the recce. Oh, ground the machine gun there gets destroyed alongside the roofing. Yep, there we go. Now the foot gods take advantage of the maelstrom of oh, chaos the and the Jaegers are in trouble, Dane! Almost got wiped by that airburst as well. That was some great value on that one. Ooh, should he pick up this MG with the foot gods? They are expensive. He's got another unit close by that could get... No, he's going to destroy them with the Shrek. That works too, for sure. Six pounder got the kill from max range on the crew weapon, so a nice pickup, all in all, for Theo. Indeed, and now he's bringing up 17 pounder guns. He's unlocking them. 
<laughs> DK in chat says, air burst is short for nuke. Yes, indeed, it is an air burst hydrogen bomb. <laughs> indeed, that one definitely also needs to get turned down a bit. Rooker's end of half in the Panzer Fia. Oh, yep, incurring a big health damage there from that high explosive round. Indeed, and Philip Mix makes a good point here that uh, the Dosis could start calling back the Stuart for something a bit bigger. Hmm, withdraw and refit, perhaps. Indeed, very powerful ability for the Brits, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's really good. What we could do, maybe go for the, uh, the Grunt, like you said. And even that Crusaders right now could be decent. It is the T-34 after all. Right in the centre, we've got an infantry push from Jibba, but it's slow going. He's up against stern resistance. Double Jaegers pushing in with the Grants taking the brunt of the assault. There's the Shreks, but they do barely anything to the massive Matilda. And we got the Vickers now joining him, and we've got a German Vickers firing back. Oh, oh that's not for much for longer. <laughs> yeah. They can't take it. Matilda there being repaired up. Flak better being hold forwards again. Right, back in base for Theo. He's got a lot of infantry re-emerging, but he's going to be going in piecemeal for a while now because the carousel of death and destruction is in operation. And a lot of these units are getting pushed off constantly. It's very difficult for each player to assemble their armies for a killing push. Indeed, constant small engagements just make it difficult to like, make up for those big pushes. You have to exert that pressure all. Just bide your time and wait for the big one. But you can't do that as Brits against Breakthrough, I feel, because I feel like you're on a timer. And as soon as that Tiger's out, it's going to be so much tougher. Oh, now the flag fairy could be trying to get back to many mistakes and in the flag crew with low health here versus the Adoches. It's in the middle of the bloody road. I am not sure what Jib was thinking with that one. If he was thinking, it wasn't just acting reflexively. Oh, that tilt the blue's engine out. Yep, Matilda with a damaged engine. Panzer IV goes in. And all of Jibber's armies ready to push as the cowardly uh, crew member of that former 30 cal retreats back to base. Past base and into pastures new. Quickly crewing the flag third and then gets it cleared again and then it crows it again. <laughs> gets it cleared again. And a mine, mine goes fighting. off, indeed it does. Shrek's could take out the Stuart now. They're going as forward as their little legs will carry them. No further flag 30 for the third time before. Dude, Doge's knocked it out there. He's got to get out of the smoke, though, Dane, because here comes another airburst. It seems. Oh. Can he survive? Yes, he survives. He oh, my. Away. But will the Jaegers now? They've got to retreat through Hellfire and Brimstone. They also get out of there. Bloody hell. And the flat crew is almost dead. Matilda, though, looks like he's going to go for the flag 30 here. The Mimo Arecchi section is definitely reconnoitering that. Can the flag survive oh, the that? It's just got behind the the tree there. But here comes the Matilda through the fence. One more shot. The flag is dancing with it. These crew members are like Muhammad Ali in the early 60s, somehow surviving fleet of foot and sound of mind. Absolutely impressive work. And then proceeds to give a few warning shots to the Matilda. And here comes the big boy, the behemoth, the Leviathan. The heavy tank, six years in production, 60 tons of crop stall and an 88mm cannon, originally for ships, Dane, originally for ships, and now it's on the beach. It's on two of them, in fact, and Theo, he's got a lot of work to do. Eager is here. He's an eager Tiger. Absolutely. Now, is it going to be a good time for the Doshas to get that 17 pounding on the field there? And Looks like Jib is finally pulling back that flag ready for some healing reinforcements. <laughs> he needs it. These guys have seen some shit. Oh, no. They really have. But uh, absolutely heroic action there to stay alive whilst the Matilda was bearing down on them. Heroic indeed. Those sappers are not in for a great time. 
And as soon as the tiger clears up, this cat and crap sweeps in there. The wow. Little buddy cop comedy there. Little and large, Timon and Pumba. And it's not going to be a Hakuna Matata for, for um, Theo. Yeah. Still no 17 pounder gun here from Theodosius. Can't expect that like any time now, honestly, versus the Tiger tank. No, it's only natural. Hakuna Matilda. <laughs> so, <laughs> did you say that? That's awesome, Hakuna Matilda. <laughs> yeah, it's like he has a tobacco that actually just said that in the chat here. So it's like, you know, two thumbs up to that one. Oh, well, it was between you and Debacle who, as to whom I was going to co-cast with today, Dane. But it seems like we got the best of him anyway. Indeed. <laughs> Until then, they're exposing its ass to the Tiger Tank, and the Tiger Tank just slaps that ass. <laughs> Does it? Okay. <laughs> it's a bit X-rated. But uh, Akuna Matilda means no worries for the rest of your day. It's our, it's our infantry tank. Philosophy. Akuna Matilda. That was a bit of a short-lived push to the hill there by uh, Theodosius' forces. Gurkha's pushing out on the cover air burst. He burst the machine gun, but the angle is a bit rubbish. Mm, they're and trying to the smoke out. Team. Yeah, the Tiger's stuck between targets. So finally traverses. Here comes the attack ground, and it's a miss. Meanwhile, got foot guards trying to then flank the Jaegers. They get caught now by the MD-42 in return. It's just not going well here for Theodosius. No, I think Jib is going to claw this one back, Dane. Yeah, I'd say there's a fairly good chance here unless UDS has got something really clever planned up his sleeve here. Well, he's oh, getting he's the 17-pounder. You'll be happy to know. What have you just seen, Dane? He was charging the flank fader with the studio. He's almost got it again. The enemy has claimed a second. Oh, yep, oh. there it is. Oh, and this time! And here comes the Panzer IV to save the day. The Finally, the Flak 30 is down. Jaeger's almost getting wiped out in the process. No, it looks like they survived as well. Oh, this infantry starting to gain a lot of veterancy, day. Yeah, that's where things get dangerous, and particularly with all that training there for Theodosius. Right, Tiger versus Matilda. First shot bounced off the frontal armor. Are on and there we go, the 17 pounder gun has finally arrived. Yes, that was a fairly accurate recreation of a frontal armor battle there between the two behemoths, because the Matilda actually had very, very high effective frontal armor. Indeed, he could, in fact, bounce from uh, Flak 36 there. Right, can you maneuver the CWT truck and get that 17 pounder into position? It's like playing. Uh, Sim 2000, Sim City 2000 on a ZX Spectrum. It's a very difficult operation. So finickety. Can he manage it? Oh, he's stuck. He's at a 90 degree angle. He's trying to get to the flagpole. Can he do it, Dane? I'd say he's got a good chance there with his pheasant. Oh, no. No, he hasn't. There he goes. He's trying to go again. He's trying to go. He's reversing, Dane. And there he's he delivered goes. the 17 pounder. What a legendary micro expedition that was from Theo. Indeed. So now if Jim are trying to push across that hill, he's going to get slapped right across the face. <laughs> oh, I'm excited, Dane. <laughs> get your uh, Motorola razors out because we're going to see some happy slapping. Where was the name you put it to here by the Northern Victory Point? Gets away. Or was it actually just regular artillery? I think it was, yeah. Good old 25 pounder gun. Medium tanks Ooh, we're getting grants next day. Yeah, but sorry, let me talk normally like a normal human being. Ooh, Dane, we're getting grants next. Yes, we're getting grants. <laughs> Here we go. We're pushing in with the Matilda, with the Gurkhas, with the foot guards. Massive infant lobby. It completely deletes the steward finally. There we go. Three Shreks was what it was needed. Requisition of grants complete, Commander. Entering the 17 pounding on close to the front line here. Bit of a leapfrog here from Theodosius. Oh, the tanks are going to be lined up a bit. Direct hit. Oh, I tell you. Foot guards pursued too far and are pushed away. 
Let's do a quick sync check, Dane. We're at 32, 33, 34, 35, 35, 36, 37, 38. Yep, perfect. Just checking. Right, meanwhile, Tiger has down to 70% health. Now, big shot there. The 17 pounder. Oh, that grenadier was in the perimeter and it was certainly monitored almost to death. And this pretty much just holds any offensive action from Jibber at the moment. Ah. Uh, a famous I win button. My favorite. I still remember in Code 2 where the version lasted like two minutes. Yeah, I remember a player called Seeking. I won't talk about what happened to him, but when he first won a 2v2 tournament, I was so impressed with Creative Name because he, he discovered, he was the first top player to discover just how good Perimeter Overwatch was. And looking back, it, he just basically said this I win button is it okay if I press this and it's like everybody else in the community is like we don't tend to press that it's like well I do <laughs> what a strategic a mastermind <laughs> yeah we're losing a victory point there we go we got the M3 grant out of there oh no the ugly uncle at your parents wedding that you're advised not to sit on the knee with this monstrosity is on the field. Look at that thing, Dane. It's got many cannons. Indeed it has, and it's riveted. Extra spalling. It's, it's a land ship, Dane, just like Winston Churchill envisaged. Riveting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, though, the crews did actually like the grant. Bloody, uh... That's a fun fact. The Russians Can't didn't. They called it a coffin for seven men, didn't they? Yeah, but apparently the name might have slightly I mean, liked it. There certainly seems to be some confusion there. Yeah, a lot of these things are made up. You have to be careful what you say. Yeah, but it certainly comes like Western equipment because, you know, they'll say one thing, but you, like, look at how they used it. They loved it. Like, you know, the same with the Sherman. Supposedly they didn't like it, but if you look at where they put the Sherman, which is like, you know, their elite guard formations, it's oh, like, you know, A yeah. little bit of Cold War revisionism, possibly. Here we go. We've got the foot guards pushing in. We've got the Matilda. Oh, and a... Grenade on the Tiger, shocking its crew. Oh dear, it's looking really bad for the Tiger tank here. It could go the way of Whitman at this rate. Oh, big shot from the 17 pounder, high velocity. Straight through the frontal armor and a Shrek from the foot guards. Tiger looks likely to get away, however. Yeah, he just lacks the forces for up. The Grant is just basically way too behind you to catch up and finish it off, unfortunately. Well, slowest pursuit, Matilda followed up, but he couldn't find the Tiger. Meanwhile, Panzer IV forces him off. However, he's run into the Grant. And takes a full volley to the face. Should have listened to his parents. Right. Oh, oh. almost got the flag 30 and the machine in the south of the airburst. Yeah. Yes, again, Jibber with the micro to escape. Well played. Also, just sensing that the south is open, he quickly pushes through, then actually gets a lot of rain away from Theodosius. Oh, the ground hits a mine! Oh. The engine's out. The engine's out, but there is any follow up. There's one Jaeger squad that's coming, but it won't be able to get there in time, it would seem. Indeed not. Right, let's uh, let's have a look at the repairs we've got for Jib. We've got two Pioneers, Veterancy 1. They both have the Minesweeper, so it's going to be out of action for a while. We have 200 points Indeed. Remaining. Indeed. The enemy is trying to take a point from us. But it's better than it being out of action permanently. Yes, definitely. Is it load bearing? Then it's fixed. 224 viewers watching this. Welcome, everybody. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. A fuel point is being Ooh, that's a nice amount of viewers. Yeah, it's not bad for something that was very little advertised on my stream, so yeah, I'm pretty yeah. happy with that. Talk, talking of the construction of the... Uh, let's make sure there's nothing else going on. Actually, hang on a second. Just watch a lot of capping going on, a lot of posturing for position. Looks like Jib is getting stronger. Yes, Danny, with the high explosive shells, the 17 pounder gun can hit infantry. By the way, pop cap wise Theo's at 99, Jibber's at 86. They're both in a position to go all in. Their manpower is accumulating. We've got 720 versus 700 now for Jibber. So there's a lot to play with. Yeah, but they're probably just both waiting for that right moment to make the push, and they just can't <laughs> seem to find it. Uh, a squad just got absolutely annihilated there. I don't know if it was foot guards or sections. There's a section, I think. 
Yeah, probably a second because I do see the foot guards alive. Yeah. Ah, uh, so yeah, so I, I once uh, I once attended a steelwork class day, and they had me drilling little holes and then using bolts to combine the steel. At first, I found it very boring, but then after that, it was riveting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here we go. We've got a bombing strike. Utilize its incendiary bombing run, but everything evades it. Tiger's overstepping the mark, though. We've got the Matilda pushing inside hits on the big cat, but it is reversing away. Yeah, he tried to stun the Panda 4. Didn't quite work out either. Tiger kind of got those not mentioned to two. Ooh, Quirk has been caught by the Tiger tank. Not looking great. He's got the Grant once more inching forwards here. Oh, MG. Nearly evaporated there. Six pounder pushing up. Tiger's overstaying his welcome. It's going to get another big shot through the front if it's not careful. And we've got a panda for ourselves on the grant damaging the engine again. Going from Northwich, one with an ace machine. We've got the cannon crowd just hiding out there like a voyeur in the bushes. <laughs> oh, he needs to be on a register or something. Meanwhile, in the south, we do have the uh, two man Jaeger squad capping a victory point, showing Jibba knows he cannot afford to lose this, but the Matilda Vet 3 may be losing its life right now. Love the really big loss here for Theodosius to lose this Matilda. Not a great shot from the 17 Panagani. Good shot from the Frenchman and chat Aziligath. Theo needs Muni caches. It's not a bad option. He could really start spamming the off map air burst barrage or indeed the perimeter monitor with some Muni caches. Indeed, that would do him a lot of good. It's for sure. That is indeed a very good call there, Aziligath. Very good call. An increasingly good player, by the way, Aziligath. I don't know if you caught any of his recent replays or. or uh... Oh, I have, I have. So, definitely getting very solid there. Passes matches versus Sander there as well. A tight knit community. We know how long it takes to get good at this game because we like names like Azilagath. It's like we've known him for six years. He's finally getting good. Oh, it takes six years, <laughs> apparently. The beggars are threatening a victory point. It probably also helps that Code 3 is more open to various playstyles compared to Code 2. True that. Recce section couldn't take out this Vet 2 MG. Meanwhile, in the north, another barrage used on the MG there. It's an airburst again. He does love that airburst for good reasons. Until they're providing good anti for support here. And in the south, the few doses moving forward, see it backed up by the grant. Okay, and Crud just chilling in the north as the tiger re emerges. Tiger up to veteran C2 now. Ooh, very close to veteran 3, actually. Is it already? Wonder how many kills the big cat's got. Let's have a look. It's gotten 24 infantry kills. Not a bad day in the office, to say the least. Not at all. Meanwhile, oh, Matilda, the Matilda has 38. Well, that's been on the field for longer. Yeah, and the Gurk has just got completely crushed. Oh, did the Tiger they? tank. Oh yeah, I can see that now. Oh dear. And now the Vickers crew could very well go the way of the Dodo as well. And the Jaegers, it's bloody hell, loads of people are dropping like flies out there. Yeah, and we got, oh, smoke here against the machine gun. And then yeah. it's tank. You'll never know if it's an incendiary or a smoke, that's the terror that is. Oh, breakthrough. he's going in aggressive with the 17 pounder gun on the hill here, he's going to try and flank Jebba. What a push from Theo, this could be, he's got the Grant coming in, the Matilda as well, the... Panzer IV could be the target of choice. The 17 pounder lands off a big shot, but the Matilda bounces its own. Couldn't complete the kill. Oh. Me 17 pounder guns on the got the Panzer IV. Grant is dealing with the bounty troops. Gurk is counterattacking. Look at that, guys. This is awesome to watch. One huge grenade assault on the 17 pounder. It looks to be towed away to safety. Theo wants out of this hill. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, overcommitted. He doesn't want to go a hill too far. <laughs> Commander, we should utilize it's like Breaking Bad, he wants a new vacuum cleaner, please. Can he get an extraction? Exactly. He almost had the Panzer for the big away. Meanwhile, there's all this hand with you. Doge has completely seized the beaches. Bloody the hell, sound. he did. This could be a 2-0 victory for the German. A massive underdog victory in this game, given Jibba's uh, higher standing historically. Indeed, but he's just like, you know, this isn't just being a diversionary assault, basically, he's just keeping through uh, Debra's nose on the north while he's just grappling to the south. 
And we got another grunt on the way there. Oh, lovely stuff. This is what we want to see. More and armor. More destruction. Let's go. Plus, it's worth knowing he's got tank training as well there. There we go. Those tanks definitely hit extra hard. Tiger Vet 3 now, reversing into view. It's got such high rate of fire, can really cause some problems. Absolutely. And now we've got Jibber storming the south beaches. Yep, oh dear, yeah. we could be seeing another bank engagement here by the hill though. Oh, the forces are assembling, Dane. We've got Jibber on the south beach. He could come in with a flanking action here if Theo overextends himself. He could come straight through the centre, so he has to be careful there. 17-pounder re-sets up. Pine is surely going to die. Oh, good hit on the Titan tank, but the 17-pounder gun is half to eventually for himself. There's some more air burst barrage forcing away the MG. Here comes the cavalry. Yeah, the pioneers are going to go down. They are. It could be the Tiger as well. The Tiger and the Panzer IV are backing themselves against the wall. There's nowhere else to go because here comes the Brits. The Redcoats are hot on their tails. The Tiger needs to start getting some big shots in before it dies. Vet 3 Tiger could go down, Dane. It goes down. He tried to blitzkrieg, but it was too late. Oh. down, but a grab for Tiger is a beautiful trade there. The Panzer IV is kaput. It is indeed. Here come the Jaegers, however. The Jaegers with their Shreks are on the rear side of these vehicles. Can they make amends? Uh, they can only run. Wow, that looked to be a win here for Theodosius now. I don't really see Jibber bouncing back from this easily. No, no, there's no way back. Surely Theo needs to take and hold and he should be able to see this game out. However, he's on 96 victory points. Meanwhile, Jibber is on 227. This year is just being played out with the Grants and the Matildas. Ah, look at the Kettengrad. Look at the Kettengrad going to the south victory points. <laughs> We're losing yeah, victory and we got another Grant on the way, meanwhile, for a few doses. He's just chucking them out. We're yeah. Losing a munitions point. Like he's getting them from the Americans, which he is. Good work, man. <laughs> It's a poor factory in Detroit sending them on a Liberty ship to Tunisia. This is looking pretty bad for Jeff. I'm not entirely sure what his plan next is. Is he just going to like try and alert for a Tiger Tank here? Or... Check out this incendiary. Could get rid of the veteran seat on the 17-pounder. There it goes. Solving your problems with fire Our the German way. <laughs> oh, and the Grant hits a mine. It does. Where's the follow-up, though? Is this Jaeger going to get a Shrek or what? I don't think he's got the munitions after that incendiary bombing run. He's got to bring up the other Jaegers to finish off the Grant. And the Ketakrat is going to go for the Southern Victory Point. Now it's spied its chance. Buildings collapsing in the Grant's guns. Medium tank. He's just gotten another Grant as well. If he can keep this one alive, he'll have a massive flotilla, an armada of ugly three turreted monstrosity tanks. Oh, there's another Shrek. Hit. Can he take it out? Yes, he can. That's a good pickup for Jibber, keeping himself in the game. Oh, my God. Oh. He's become Death Destroyer of Worlds and Jibber has forced to tap out thanks to that airburst. He overstayed his welcome and his infantry was <laughs> obliterated there. Truly obliterated. <laughs> That's the two Jaeger squads gone. We're going to have moment to... They were there, next moment they were goulash. <laughs> we're going to have to clip that. We're going to have to get that on a clip because uh, I need to see it again for one. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh That was what you call an ending. Oh my God. You yeah. don't that was a proper ending, Dane. You get a lot of games end in a whimper. That end end, end oh, game ended in mine. chunks. It does. Where's the follow? Yeah, that ended with this a wet bang. Just watching a repeat of it now. And the Catacrat is gonna go for the Southern Victory Point now. It's He's just gotten another Hit! Can he take it?
He's become Death Destroyer of Worlds, and Jibber has forced to tap out thanks to that airburst. He overstayed his welcome, and his infantry was <laughs> obliterated. Air obliteration, that's a good name for that. There we go. <laughs> Well, that was fun, AD. Eh, that was very Doors. fun. That was beautiful amount of fun. <laughs> Not a bad way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Far That's... from it. Let's check yeah, out. Much worse ways you can spend your Sunday, I'd say. Let's check out what's going on with this. Uh, we're hosting um, this other channel today. Um, Grey yeah. Shots doing some casting, I believe. So go and check that out. Um. The three announcements. Here we go. There, there he is. Right. I think they're preparing for. I think they've done their semi-final. They should be doing their third place playoff. Um. Oh, you can do at thingies in the titles now. Dane, I could have added you. Oh, that's a shame. Mm. Oh well. It comes up with like nice pretty colours and all sorts. Twitch have actually added a feature. What's going on? Right then, thanks very much for that, Dana. Are you still streaming? Maybe I'll come and give you a few sub gifts or something. Um if I'm not subbed to you already. Well and I'll probably switch over as soon as I know my viewers to Meta Plays RTS there as well. Oh, I don't know why I just tried to re Yeah, yeah, I've been asked to do that, so I'll get that done now. Uh Raid. Meta plays RTS. There we go. It's not Age of Mythology today. It is indeed Company of Heroes 3. $680. Uh, donated largely by Grayshot and Curry. He themselves, by the way, just trying to get it oh. started. So big credit to them. Big credit to yeah. Ul Ulvedi and Curry for organizing, I believe. And to everybody that's played, as always, and all you lovely viewers. And big thanks to Imperial Dane today for casting with me. Thank you. Yeah, and big thanks for casting with me as well. That was a great fun. A lot it of fun. Really was. As, as ever. As ever. Right then, guys, thank you so much for watching. Here's uh, the rest of today's action. Cheers. And, yeah, cheers from me as well. Yeah. Bye, everyone. was fun, casting. Thanks for that, Dane. Look forward to doing it in the future, mate. Cheers. Oh, if you're still on YouTube, by the way, I I'm going to keep this rolling because, obviously, I want a two-hour video. So, yeah, I do. That was really good. Two really, really good games. Absolutely excellent stuff. And, um, yeah, it was good. I like casting with Dane. Him and I have got a lot better at casting together. Um, But he does say indeed a lot, doesn't he? Take a shot every time Imperial Dane says indeed to me. And, uh, yeah, you'll be dead. You'll be absolutely dead. So what have these guys been doing today, then? Let's check out their stream. I want to um, just check out what's gone on with their stuff. See if I can watch the board as it... Yeah, I can. Good. I want to see who won. How they won, basically. So, right. First game. Oh, I have to add my camera to this so it's not so... Um, stealing content. Now it's AE Reacts. <laughs> right, let's use this as a filler screen. So first 20, 30 minutes was waiting for the game to start. Good stuff. Ray shot one seven and next to me is Stormless. <laughs> I like yep. how it froze. Hello, everyone. Hope you're well. <laughs> that was quite funny. Watch that. <laughs> oh, God. Watch this. It's really funny. Alrighty. Greetings, everyone. Um, I am Grayshot17, and next to me is Stormless. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why that tickles me so much. <laughs> right, then. Let's check out what... Uh... Orange Pest did in his game. So, Ket and Crad MG. Can't quite see what's going on there because they haven't got the over. They haven't got the streaming uh, setup I use with the 
double sides. It's all right. Oh, Jeep went past the MG's vision there. That's pretty cool stuff. Rifleman flanked it. I mean, I don't know which player is the... By the way, this is um, Hulk Smash versus Orange Pest. I'm going to assume that Orange Pest is the Wehrmacht. Yeah, Orange Pest is the Wehrmacht player, yeah. Grey Shot tends to do a lot of camera rotation, I've noticed, when I've watched him in the past. Very uh, exciting. And uh, guy to watch and a solid community member. It takes one to know one. Because he did, recently he did that 4v4 map competition, which I thought was well needed. It was really, really needed. Right then. So, Rifleman versus 2-2-1. There. So, I imagine the Orange Pest will be going for Mechanized here. Um, probably... Go for a big push on the plus 10 fuel and cut off in the first 15 minutes or so. I don't know how many pioneers he used. He's gone for two MGs, so I can see that now just about. Wow. There we go, Panzer Buxer. Buxer? Panzer Buxer. That was how you say it. Forcing ever the M8 off. And getting the kill. So, I would just say, yeah. Kind of lack of reading of the possibilities there from Hulk. Should have kind of expected the Panzer Buxer if the 221 had been on the field for that long. Should have been wary of it. A bit of game sense needed, maybe. Hmm. So, the yeah, Orange Pest has had the majority of the map so far. He's starting to get a good amount of victory point control now. We do have the Jeep still out. Fuel wise, he's on 23. Hulk smashed on 23, so yeah. It's only 12 minutes in, 13 minutes in there. Hmm. I mean, Hulk smash is a solid player, but Orange Pest is just showing here that he's just way better at the control dynamics of top-level company heroes. His output and his ability to control the map is kind of getting a Silda slash Love Nest esque now. He's not just being a bit of a, you know, micro junkie kind of, ta uh, the, you know, on a tactical level, on a more strategic, broader sense, he's able to exert pressure across the map and just overwhelm his opponents and grind them down. And you can just see the attritional play um, over time with that grinding is just really going to work. Yep. Right, we're at one an hour forty-eight. Could don't want to stop at one hour fifty because it's a. Uh, that's just not round enough of a number. Well, I could do, I suppose. A bad time to stop. Yep, just ground him out. Wasn't able to do that, and then we got the stats there. Infantry, oh, look at that KD. That's... And he did lose his vehicles, but his just map control was much, much better. Victory point control, rather, I suppose. Right, I just really want to get it from Orange Pest's perspective. Because um, then we get Orange Pest's build orders. He is the... The comprehensive number one top dog player at the moment. 
Right, so let's get rid of that. So it's just three rifles, captain, normal stuff, jeep, armoured. It is the meta of the day. Meanwhile, Hulk Smash just went for Panzer Grenadiers. Looking for Stugs, perhaps? Could be, could be. Look at the victory point count already. Look at that. Just gone for bars. Uni surplus is winning the infantry engagements at the moment. And how many MGs? Oh, he didn't go for MGs. You've got to be joking. If you don't go for MGs on road to tuners, you need your head examining because that is a recipe for absolute disaster. IMO. You really do need them. Scott's out now for Orange Pest as well. Putting down the pain. And he hasn't lost a single victory point in game two. Not a single victory point. I just think that's uh, not a great... There we go. The, he did get an MG. My bad. Um, but uh, too little, too late. And a 500 victory point win in less than 20 minutes for Orange Pest. I did tell everybody in uh, when we were talking about what games we were casting that the two Orange Pest games would be an average of 20 minutes each, total of 50 minutes, and I wasn't wrong. But it's not hard to be wrong. Meanwhile, there we go. We've got the stats... Not too crazy for KD this time, but map control. I don't know what this means, but it was a lot bigger of a number. <laughs> That's all I can say there. Do we have the third place playoff, or are they going to wait to cast that? Uh, I think they're waiting to cast that. So let's um, see what's going on there. Yeah, they're still waiting, it would seem. Still waiting to cast that. Fair enough. And where are we up to now? We're up to... what? How we got eight more minutes of time to kill. Eight more minutes of time to kill. I'll just get my book of tanks, shall I? <laughs> Where's my book of tanks? I, I do have a book of tanks. I've also got a book of World War II facts. question you ask your wife where's my book of tank facts someone's been into my house and they've stolen my book of tank facts <sighs> That would have made for excellent fluff material. That would have been god tier, in fact. But the good news is it took me five minutes to find 
my book of tank facts. What I could do instead is show you <laughs> photos of me as a baby. That's that'll be good. Oh yeah, here we go. There's AE as a big fat baby. There you go. I was a big boy. Look at that. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Right. I can't show naked A. Eh? There's some naked photos here. Need to be careful what I show. Got my little todger out there. It's much more acceptable to take naked photos of babies in 1989, it would seem. I could definitely show that one, though, because... I'm on my little bike, and uh, oh, I'll just show you that's cute. As I'm getting a bit older now, look at that, I'm really cute. It's Christmas, I had a lot of presents before my sister was born. I had to share the amount of presents. I had a bunny rabbit uh, costume, I think that's pretty cool. Bunny rabbit costume, still got that actually. I don't think it fits anymore, sadly. Uh, I don't want to show photos of the rest of my family, so I'll just show photos of these. Uh, not entirely impressed with this giraffe, clearly. I mean, uh, apparently I didn't like the giraffe. I did like the uh, elephant, though, it seems, and the goat. This kid wouldn't share his ball with me, and uh, that's just annoying, isn't it? He looks like a little a little dick, doesn't he? Look at him. He won't share his ball with me. What an arsehole. I started wearing glasses around this age. There we go. Santa. I'm kind of happy to see him. I don't know why. Happy to do the dishes, apparently, as well. How many more minutes of... Oh, three more minutes of talking to people. I could just put on a weight screen, but uh, that'd be far more efficient. I've gotten used to trying to fill in the gaps as much as I can. <sighs> Have the Metaplays RTS team started streaming yet? Still not. What are they waiting for? I really don't get what they're waiting for. Waiting for them. Do they know they should be like asking for the replays off the players one by one? They're not waiting for the full uh, replays series to finish, are they? Surely not. I mean, that's that's not what you do. You just tell the players to send them one by one. And if they, if you don't tell that to the players, you're just waiting for the results. I I have to remember I do have a crap ton of experience of this kind of thing, so. Nobody asked me, though. Nobody asked me to check their rules or check their procedures or whatever. It's fine. I don't want to do work for free anyway. Done my time. Just a caster now. All right, then. How much longer have I got to speak to everybody? Uh, two more minutes. Jesus Christ. If, if I had my tank fact book, this would have been far easier. But I've lost it. I've lost it to the ever. I'll never, never to be returned. It's a, such a big shame. Yeah, right then. If you've made it this far, today's um, today's password will be on this screen here. Uh, I really, really think you need your head checking if you've made it this far. Um, but your password is... I need something funny. Has to be funny. Disappointing. <laughs> no, don't say that. Yeah, the password is disappointing. Because <laughs> if you say that, I'll be like, is, is that the password you're using? Or have you just watched all two hours of this like, bloody video? <laughs> That's quite funny. Yeah, the password is disappointing. And then people be like, actually, this game was epic. And you're like, oh, I'll just say the password. 
Oh, that'd be so funny. There we go. I remember co2.org when that was a thing. That used to be a thing, didn't it? Who's this Kotachanka guy? Is he a Russian? Is that Maza? He used to be Maza. No? Yeah, he's Russian. It is Maza. It's Maza, yeah. He's just changed his name. Oh, only on co2.org. Okay. He's got a lot of viewers and he's a bonny old fellow now. Oh, got 20 more seconds left where I can stop the recording and start uploading. And my Sunday evening devolves into... I'm going to play a lot of Zelda tonight, I think. I really love Zelda uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, some whiz -bang action. Let's go. Right, thank you so much for watching this. If you made it this far, I don't understand you, but I will thank you regardless. And... Uh,